Star Wars. Nothing but Star Wars. Give me the Star Wars. Don't let them in. Bienvenidos, worldwide fans of the planet's hottest entertainment with an edge from a galaxy far, far away. I'm in Fuego here welcoming you to my namesake program, in Fuego Tainment, once more, and you can just call me Fuego for short, but I'm super stoked that you are here for part two. That's right, the second part of my Throwback Thursday coverage here in the lead up to May the 4th of the two Ewoks movies. Now, to be plain and clear, there are two Ewok movies, but there's a pretty lame Ewok movie, and then there's the one that I affectionately remember as a child, which is the good Ewok movie, at least in my estimation. Now, I know Stuckman has done hilariosities about both of those, but this is one that I do truly believe has much more merit, and that's not just based on the nostalgia factor. That has, uh, I mean, there is very obviously a larger budget to this. It is bigger and better in pretty much every possible capacity. It really does the Cameron effect of like Aliens or Terminator 2, but for Ewok movies. And I know it's Ewoks, you know? It's, you know, it's, all Jedi had was a bunch of Muppets, right? Well, you know, Jedi is my favorite of the Star Wars films. And so, hey, Dante, I'm sorry, I disagree. I'm with Randall in this particular faction and, uh, I love Battle for Endor, even though it's not technically Endor, it's the moon of Endor, it's that stupid triviality stuff that just irks me to no end, but I mean, a lot of people who are casual Star Wars fans even think that, yeah, the end of Jedi is on Endor, well, everybody who is uh, actually paying attention knows that's not quite the case, but hey, whatever. Battle for Endor, this takes place storyline-wise six months after the previous film, Caravan of Courage, and we have the same family, which is, you know, you've got, uh, what, Mace, I think is the, the older brother's name, and then you've got uh, uh, Sindel, the younger sister, who's the super adorbs, cute little uh, curly-haired blondie girl, and then her parents and stuff, and they were the ones who were basically marooned on the moon of Endor in the previous film, and they are just about ready to finally escape when in the first couple minutes of the film, these really gnarly looking marauders that are kind of at least an equivalent, especially Derek, their bad guy, kind of an equivalent of like, um, uh, it's eluding me, Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes, especially Derek, their big bad guy. And uh, there is more bloodshed and death in the first few minutes of this film than we had in the entirety of Caravan of Courage, Caravan, Caravan of Courage. And so they started off on a good note, you know? And you've got these blurgs, blorgs, blur, or whatever the hell they are. I know that they popped up in, uh, what, Mandalorian, and I think they were also in maybe a video game or two, something like that. But yeah, they, these dope looking, like, lizardy, dinosaur y looking creatures that the bad guys are using to pull their, their uh, capture, uh, captive caravan uh, carriages of sorts or whatever. And uh, yeah, I mean, Basically, I, this is kind of a spoilery review of sorts, so just to forewarn everybody, I saw this as a kid, and I hadn't watched it in about 30 years, but I was able to track down one of these at, uh, DVDs that, as I just looked in between watching the first and the second one, these are a lot pricier than I realized. I guess I was just very fortunate to obtain it for under $20 in an auction on eBay, but if you jump on Amazon, uh, and uh, granted, these are not streaming on Disney+, Plus. they have specifically said they're not going to put them on there. I guess there is a petition to try to get them on there as they flip and should be man but you know aside from that I'm very fortunate to have this and to, yeah watching the second half in uh, for over I was probably like four or five in the 80s when I first saw this and as I gave it some reconsideration from the previous video where I reviewed Caravan of Courage I do not believe I watched this on the initial broadcast I would have been way too young I would have been like two years old maybe you know so I saw this obviously on some VHS home release when I was very very young or maybe there was a rebroadcast but nonetheless there's certain aspects about this film that I distinctively remembered despite three decades removed and uh, yeah so 
Sindel, uh, her family is killed, all three of them, at the very beginning of this movie in the first three minutes. And I was especially amused by the fact that they recast the father as the principal for Breakfast Club, for God's sake. And uh, he actually does a good job for those few minutes that he's in it. And uh, this was the same year as Breakfast Club, November of 1985. The previous November was when ABC, as a two-hour movie of the week, did the... E Ewok Adventure, which was, you know, the, the first film, you know, Caravan and everything. And, uh, yeah, a year later, they're like, let's try it again. And they had just launched the Ewoks animated series. And so the, George was like, let's give them all the Ewoks they can stand, man. Let's just roll with it, dude. And even four years later, they did a role-playing game about Battle for Endor. And so, yeah, I mean... I have a soft spot for this movie, obviously, but I do contend with scarier villains, obviously, first and foremost, higher stakes, bigger budget, bigger scale, all of this leads to a better film, and also, you have a very endearing dynamic that uh, puts itself forth pretty early in the film. So after Wicket and Sindel are able to escape from these marauders, I forget their specific name, but uh, yeah, the other Ewoks are taken back to this castle and Wicket and Sindel escape, and they run amok of this Noah guy who is none other than the Quaker Oats dude. I know he's got an extensive film history beyond that, but yeah, that and the diabetes, you know, I mean, everybody, did, he was really making important stuff known with those ad campaigns, but more so than anything, most people my age from the 80s and 90s probably know him as the Quaker Oats guy, you know, and uh, yeah, I know he was in The Thing and various other stuff, that, that, that very extensive film history, uh, television history too, I know he did some, some TV work I distinctively recall in the 80s, but nonetheless, he basically, he starts out as this grumpy face kind of uh, arsehole, and then he, it is, uh, you know, they, they warm his heart with a cool island song, uh, just quote South Park. And yes, he goes from Mr. Grumpy McGrumper Pants into uh, actually being a very soft-hearted and sweet guy who initially trying to kick the two of them out, Wicked and Sindel, him and Teak. And Teak, I'd forgotten all about Teak. That smile, I don't know, he, he looks like a, I, I don't know, like a, a ferret on crack or something. But I remembered him specifically from when I went to Star Tours as a really little kid to Disneyland. And this is where you have to remember, like, this was Fox and Disney working together because Disney owns ABC, and this was long before, you know, Disney bought up Fox and, and took over Lucasfilm and all of that other stuff. So, yeah, it's just interesting to remember him, and he just, it, he's charming. I, I think he's super adorbs, man. I, I will, uh, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve for my affinity of this film. And so, uh, yeah, basically, the four of them are like, okay, we have to try to track down the rest of the Ewoks, but before that even transpires, we learn a little bit more about these nasty marauders and how they're looking for this power source. And this power source is presumably to try to like get them off of this planet because they steal it from uh, 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 Sindel's uh, older, fa older father, her father. And uh, yeah, it's basically like the power supply for their ship when they were about to leave the planet. And they're just, they're seemingly inept and they don't really know what to do with it. Maybe they've been on the planet for so long, they've kind of lost their recollection of the power of the stars. Because as uh, Kevin J. Anderson at least put in the Legends criteria, and I know it's Legends, but it makes total sense, this, uh, this Chana, Ch Channel, Chanel, whatever the hell she is, this evil shape-shifting witch who I remember so distinctively from watching this as a kid where she transforms into a raven and she is like, she's got this steel like overbra, but she's this old creepy looking bitch. She's got very much like a mombi kind of vibe going on that we saw a couple years later in Return to Oz. And so, yeah, she is like the, she is this sorceress of Tarek, who is the leader of these creepy looking marauder guys. And so the two of them are trying to like harness this power source. They just don't really know what to do with it. They think it needs to be like magically imbued or something like that. But the sorceress, as Kevin J. Anderson said, as I alluded to just now, um, I know it's legends, but he classified her as a night sister from Dathomir. And it makes complete sense, even though they've kind of stricken it from the record because these films are no longer canon, but 
she's a dope character and so is Tarek and it makes complete sense and also if you played uh, I think it's an MMO from uh, the early 2000s a Star Wars MMO like Galaxy something I, I forget but as I was doing additional Wikipedia research about this yeah you can actually encounter those marauders if you go to the moon of Endor uh, also the weird giant with Gorax or whatever from the the previous film and so I really dig taking the full-on fantasy fairy tale approach and really taking out all of the sci-fi sci-fi adventure aspect that we got from the the main Star Wars films. I there's decent things about the Caravan of Courage, but there is a lot to love in my estimation with this particular film. The fact that the creature design is way cooler, the fact that the villains are far scarier, the fact that even when we have like big conflict at the end, yes, it does start to delve into the cheesier aspects. You get some Willow vibes at times, and Willow, as much as I love it, it does it gets kitty in certain instances and this falls prey to the same just pitfalls i suppose but really i i love this film man having rewatched it just now i just finished it i i will definitely revisit this caravan of courage probably not but the battle for endor is one that i truly appreciate and i dig what they were doing i feel like there's so much more genuine heart to this film there are much more endearing characters and there are many more endearing characters and there are far more genuine laughs as opposed to just like stoops you know whateverness it's way less derpy although obviously some people will think so and uh, the the demise of uh, you know a specific villain at one particular point Maybe kind of cheese and kind of a cop out in certain degrees, but it looks really rad at the end, especially for the dated effects that they had at the time. Credit really, in a lot of ways, to you know, George came up with the story, old Georgie boy, but. Beyond that, you've got uh, Joe Johnston, who was in the writer's room with the Wheat Brothers, who were the directors of this. And so George came in with an idea from what I was doing in my, in my research and finding out about this. But then the Wheat Brothers, the directors, they basically bopped ideas back and forth in this writer's room with George. And then Joe Johnston, who went on to do many awesome things, who was the production designer and also the second unit AD. So he, he was the second unit director, basically, um, or the second unit director. I don't know if second assistant. I, I, I always confuse a lot of those titles, but you know, he was also heavily involved in just throwing out ideas and concepts and stuff as well. The stop motion is really cool. It was right before the industry was about to move along to some stuff. I dig the score. I mean, it's yes, nostalgia may have a little bit to do with it, but really at the end of the day, I will double down on the fact that there's a pretty silly and forgettable Ewoks movie, and then there is a much stronger, more entertaining and serviceable Ewoks movie that I think is pretty damn good, and that is Battle for Endor, or THE Battle for Endor. So, in any event, I've been Jaime in Fuego, and y'all can find Wall on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube, where I ask you porfa to uh, do a subscribe and a like and all of that stuff. I'm, you know, I have my main channel that I do stuff on, which is youtube.com slash the horror show channel, like you see below. That's the spectacular reviews of, you know, television and movies and video games and books and comics and all of that stuff, along with various other things. We've done comedy sketches over the years. We've done makeup tutorials, convention interviews, where I've got to talk to a lot of interesting people in the horror community. You know, it's it's definitely my, my heart of hearts, and I've put tons of work into that channel. But this is my outlet for doing other things, the sci-fi, the fantasy, the comedy, the indie art house, and obviously all of my Star Wars covers that I've been rocking since I relaunched this channel a little over a year ago after a two-year absence. So I we have almost 33,000 subscribers on the Horror Show channel, and I am laughing Less than 30 from having a Jeezy here, so it would really mean a heck of a lot if you wanted to show some support and just hit the subscribe button. It's just a little ring my bell right down there, and uh, I'm just thankful, honestly, more so than anything else, that you were down to sit for uh, sit, walk, listen, whatever, in these crazy times that we are living in in this world, and allow me to gush a bit about uh, my favorite fantasy series. And Disney Plus better put this on their service eventually. I think if enough of a ruckus continues to transpire about it, it will eventually happen. 
holiday special, don't hold your breath. So once again, I've been Fuego, y'all have been Rad Status, and until the real of Ka comes around once more, hasta luego, sin amigos, constant viewers and readers alike, but I am hopeful that we get to share more of this palaver sooner rather than later, and you know the drill. Until then, remember, may the force be with you.